We just ended a church-wide campaign, Jesus in a Secular World, and uh, man, it was just a great time. Um, I uh, was able to be a part of a small, uh, small group uh, on Wednesdays. We had several small groups meeting in the sanctuary on Wednesday. Uh, we met with all of our small group leaders yesterday, or most of them, those that could make it, and, um, and there is just uh, people that are getting stirred up, people that are getting excited about um, what this series did, and that's really what a church-wide campaign is all about. It's just about God doing that little shift in you, and how we know if we all get a little shift, that equals a big shift, and so really we come out of this series saying, God, you know, sharing our faith, sharing the gospel is not optional, it's essential. And so as small group leaders, we were asking our question, the question was being asked, what is next? What's next? You know, what is real life going to offer next? And um, I would actually love to uh, just challenge you in the month of November to move from program to personal responsibility. And this is what I mean. I believe God is calling us to and through three things. First, he's calling us to tables. Tables meaning this, Jesus's ministry, most of Jesus's significant moments in ministry occurred around table and food. Now, we could program this and we could do, you know, dinners for aid and all those things are great. But I want to challenge you to take personal responsibility and pursue people the month of November. How many of you have ever thought of somebody in the last day, week, month saying, I ought to give them a call? Anybody besides me? Usually I respond to that. What I want you to do is I want you to listen to that and I want you to call that person and I want you to take them to coffee, take them to lunch, invite them over your home, whatever you got to do. And I want us to be intentional about meeting around tables in the month of November. Is that okay? Yes. Now, what we want to do is we want to, again, we want to move from program to personal responsibility. So I believe this. If we pursue one another, we'll continue to form the relationships and the community that is needed Come on, as God continues to add to his church daily and multiply us. How many know growth is a God thing? It's a kingdom thing, but we must intentionally pursue one another. I've told this story several times here, um, and they were actually visiting uh, real life just a few weeks ago. Their name is Mike and Brenda Miller. Mike and Brenda Miller, I met them at Jesus Culture when I was on staff there, and every Sunday they would come to church and they would say, God, who are you going to sit us by today? And they would, they would pray that prayer as they entered. And whoever they sat by, they literally looked at it as a God-ordained appointment. And whoever they sat by, at the end of the service, they would turn to them and they would say, can I, we take you to lunch? How many know that's risky? <laughs> right? That, that could be risky, right? But they did that. And every Sunday... They took someone out to lunch. I'm going to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone this month without a church program driving it. Can we take personal responsibility in the month of November and pursue one another? You say, but Pastor Dean, I'm new here. We're going to find you, all right? <laughs> Let's pursue people, the people that maybe we say, you know what, I know her, but I've never talked to her, or I've seen him, but I've never went over and introduced myself. Can we intentionally pursue one another in the month of November? I want to challenge you there. And when you do, you can start today if you want. When you meet around a table, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a selfie. Come on. Take a selfie. Tag us in it. And we want to just post of what God is doing organically, not programmatically. I'm telling you, just do it. Take the step. Everybody say, take the step. Take the step. So he's calling us to tables. The second thing is he's calling us to truth. He's calling us to truth. Uh, I'm sure that I don't have to remind everyone this, 
There, there is an election on November 8th, and the importance of us all doing our civic duty uh, to vote. I believe it's something like 30 to 40 million Christians actually avoid the ballot box and don't vote. Uh, Our communities and the state of California are in desperate need of leadership that values and upholds truth. Everybody say truth. And we have the opportunity to bring our kingdom influence. We have something we call around here the kingdom agenda. The kingdom agenda, right? It's not blue or red. It's the kingdom. It could be red if it's written in red. Amen. Amen. But we have an opportunity and I believe a responsibility to bring our kingdom influence to the ballot box. So you need to realize that your vote matters and register, then educate yourself on the candidates. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but as a church, uh, we cannot endorse specific candidates, but we can address issues of legislation uh, like Prop 1. And I'm just going to mention it here. And this is what, uh, again... As a pastor, I feel not only uh, for the church, but um, God has called me to pastor this community. God has called me to pastor in the city. Amen? Amen. And so legislation such as Prop 1, uh, which, by the way, this is interesting because you usually never see these two in agreement, but Prop 1, which pro-choice and pro-life voters agree, Proposition 1 is an extreme ballot measure that could allow taxpayer-funded late-term pregnancies to be terminated in California for any reason up to nine months. Now, hopefully I don't have to tell you, and I said could, because there is a lot of ambiguity written in the new law that would change California legislation because of a word that they have omitted called viability. Everybody say viability. You can look that up and do the research yourself, okay? But... Again, kingdom agenda. Everybody say kingdom agenda. So God is calling us to tables. Number one, again, tables are great places to have these conversations, not just one-way conversations. Hello. Everybody gets nervous when you start doing this, right? And then truth. God is calling us to truth. So he's calling us to tables. He's calling us to truth. And then he's calling us through tests and trials. Come on, how do you know what God will call you to? Come on, he'll call you through. As your pastor, a lot of families have been hit with unexpected sickness, disease, surgeries, other family challenges that have nothing to do uh, with medical issues, but other things. And I felt lead to speak this morning about God's protection plan for you and I today. I understand uh, Sandy Duvall is here, and I I believe uh, she's in the back. Hi, Sandy. We love you, and um, uh, we're just so glad we were able to pray our our prayer group. Thank you, Margie and the team, for being here and praying around her, and uh, she was uh, just diagnosed for the third time uh, with cancer, and so make sure you give her a hug today, or if you can. I'm not sure about all where she's at in the process um, exactly, but... Um, that's just one. Uh, Teresa's mom, uh, Mary Hernandez, uh, just had surgery um, to remove cancer from her body. I can go on and on and on. Um, But the last time I preached, and can we just say we love Sandy? Sandy, we love you. Come on, can we give her a hand just for being here today? The last time I preached on protection was 2019. And little did I know the world was going to experience a pandemic. And I want to put up the declaration that we made. If you guys could put that up there for me. It went something like this. I've been given power to tread on serpents, scorpions, on all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm me. He has commanded his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Again, we were 
we were declaring this over our 2020. 2020 will bring me blessings, not curses. I will prosper in the things of God. And most importantly, dear God, in 2020, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in me as it is in heaven. How many know you probably, when we declared that, you had no clue what we were about to walk through? The crazy thing is, is that, you know, <clears throat> when the pandemic came or COVID came, I got COVID. I don't know about you. I know not everybody got it, but a lot of people got it, right? So you could question, well, did it really work, right? Uh, I was just talking with, because sometimes we don't realize that God is protecting us. Even when we're going through stuff, even when we get things that God is still with us, amen? amen? I was talking with some pastors and they were saying, well, where are you at, basically, uh, post-pandemic? And um, I'm always a little reserved because um, I, not everybody is in the same place as we are. And it's not because God doesn't, God loves us more than he loves them, but all I can tell you is I'm here to testify that God protected us. He protected us. I, I can't explain it why this church is down in finances and have had to lay off people and we haven't and we actually hired more people. I, I can't tell you why and I can't answer those questions, but all I can testify is that God protected us. He protected us. But the Bible is very clear that it rains on the just and the unjust. That we live in a fallen world and as believers, we can experience tests, trials, tribulations, troubles, tragedy, very difficult situation. Have you ever been in a difficult situation? Maybe even the last few years. You don't have to think very far. However, I don't want our church to give in to worry Weariness and wavering caused by a spirit of fear which prevents us from putting our trust in the Lord for his protection, provision, and his promises of deliverance. Can you say this with me? I'm safe. I'm, safe. I'm, secure. I'm secure. And I am saved. saved. You see, God wants to reassure you that in him you are safe, secure, and saved. I'm not talking about going to heaven. I'm talking about he is able to save you. He is able to deliver you from the snare, come on, of the evil one. Psalm 91, 1 to 16, and I'd love to read this together in unison. If you could put that up there for me, will you read it with me? Psalm 91, 1 through 16, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue from every trap and protect you from a deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the arrow that flies in the day. Next. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Next, they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my my salvation. Can we give God praise for his word this morning? 
because it's actually something that we already did. It's a segue into how we can activate God's protection in our lives, and it's what, what Pastor Jesse just led us in and the team just led us in, and that is this, that we have to magnify God's presence to activate his protection plan. To magnify something is to enlarge it, to make it bigger. I'm 52 and my eyes are starting to fail me. And so I've noticed as I'm reading, I, I love to read. How many know readers are leaders? Come on. I love to read, but my eyes are growing tired. And I always got to press that button now. Zoom. I've got to zoom in on it. You see, some of us are struggling because the presence of our problems in our life are bigger than God's presence in our life. You see, praise is the magnifier. It's the zoom button in our life that enlarges God's presence in our life. This is why uh, praise is such uh, so important to this body, and it's not just a precursor to a good message, because we've got to understand, listen, the reason why I want to be on time, the reason why I want to lift my hands and praise God, because I want to magnify him over everything that's happened in my week, over everything that's going on in my life. I want to zoom in on him, and I want him to become bigger than anything else in my life. Amen. Psalm 91 is considered a messianic Psalm, that's a fancy way of saying that it points to Jesus Christ. It finds its fulfillment in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he, come on, he activated the promises of Psalm 91 by dying on the cross for you and I. This is what I talked about a few weeks ago. Listen, the grace and the mercy of God that we have access to Listen, is because Jesus died on the cross for us. In other words, God's protection plan is not waiting to be activated. Jesus activated his protection plan 2,022 years ago. And you have full access as a believer to the benefits of Psalm 91. Martin Luther called this psalm the most distinguished jewel among all the psalms. Imagine if I were to announce to you that someone had lost a $10,000 diamond that fell out of their ring. How many know you would try to find it? Man, just the two people. <laughs> Praise God, right? If I said, hey, someone just lost a $10,000 that fell, a, a diamond that fell out of the ring, how many know all of us would be like, where, where? <laughs> Now, now, if you returned it, if you didn't return it, that'd be another message, all right? But listen, God has dropped a jewel in the word of God that if found will be a blessing to your life. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest. Everybody say, will find. Not might find, not maybe will find, but will find rest in the shadow of of the Almighty. Has anybody ever uh, downloaded an app on a phone or an iPad? I'm sure all of us have, right? All of us have these different apps. And have you ever paid for and downloaded an app on your phone that you're paying for, but you have never used? I, I want to challenge you, go, go check what's automatically being deducted out of your bank account you can go on your phone and check it because I have found out, listen, I have paid as much as $59.99 for an app that I wasn't even using. You can say, because you dumb, right? <laughs> right? You paid for all the features, but you never log into the app. Even the face recognition feature on your phone has forgotten what you look like. Listen, don't allow God's presence to be something you log in and log out of. Come on, tell your neighbor, you need to stay logged in. 
You see, let there be facial recognition in your prayer life so that you're not just seeking God when you need help, but you're seeking God in response to the longing of your heart. Psalm 27, 8 says, my heart heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Has your phone not recognized you lately? Listen, don't ha- let that happen in your prayer life. Don't settle for just having a love for God's presence. Ask God to reveal to you what it means to live in his presence. You see, the word live there in other translation is the word dwell. It means to sit, to remain, to settle down. To get married, all my singles said hallelujah. (laughs) To make the place where you are at a home. I was a Bible college student. I had just finished a two-year discipleship training school. We had the opportunity to transfer to schools like North Central, Northwest, um, Bible colleges all over the country. And all my friends, all my roommates, all eight of my roommates actually transferred And I was trying to get to uh, Central Bible College in Missouri. And God, every Bible college I applied for, the doors would close. And I kept, people kept giving me psalms and scriptures with the word dwell in it. So much so that I got annoyed. I'm like, if you give me the word dwell one more time. And the Lord says, hello, I'm talking to you. Will you look it up? And I looked it up. And as soon as I read to settle down to get married, I was like, Lord, Amy is still in Santa Rosa. Hallelujah. But no, no, I really listen. The Lord spoke that word to me and I stayed despite what I wanted to do. Despite, listen, despite what my flesh wanted to do. Listen, the Lord said, you better sit still or you're about to miss God's will for your life. You see, you cannot merely check in with him on Sundays. Rather, you must dwell, sit, come on, remain. How many know this is hard for us to do? Come on, settle down. Come on, how many know, get our relationship with him right and make the place where you're at home. Everybody say home. home. Listen, stop looking for that perfect place. Come on. Just remain and create what? A home. You see, the protection of God is accessed through communion with God. And when I'm logged into Jesus, he becomes the shelter of the Most High. In other words, the shelter of the Most High is not a place. It's a person. His name is Jesus. You see, when I magnify his presence, I have a personal encounter, listen, with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. When I magnify his presence over my circumstances, the place of trouble becomes a person I can trust and rest in. His name is Jesus. You see, Jesus is your shelter. Jesus is your home to those who trust him. And I can tell you this morning, this is what your heart is looking for. This is what your heart is longing for. But if you will just sit and remain and dwell and allow God, listen, to help you create a home, listen, you will commune and you will stay logged in. Amen? Psalm 27 verse 5 says, he will conceal me when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. How many know that's a good promise right there? Who is he? Who is he? Colossians, amen. Colossians 3.3 tells us who he is. It says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So who am I hidden in? Jesus, Jesus, listen, he doesn't hide us from our trouble. He hides you in the trouble. Listen, he doesn't hide you. Listen, 
from the tragedy. He hides you in the tragedy. He holds you safe. He holds you secure. He holds you stable. You will not be shaken, says the Lord. You see, being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean you and I are not going to face any tests, trouble, trials, or tribulations. This is heretical teaching when people say, if you get saved, you have nothing to worry about. I wouldn't be saved, come on, if that were true. Because I can tell you, there has been plenty to happen in my life as a believer over 30 years. It means that in the tests, in the trouble, in the trials, in the tribulation, listen, God hides me in who he is. So that in verse two, listen, I can say, listen, it's not a promise. Listen, it is activated in my life and I can declare about the Lord that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust in him. You see, when I am logged in, I am always in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, this morning, I don't have any wings, so I got an umbrella. I got an umbrella. It's so important for us to understand this. Listen, that we, come on, should abide in the shadow. You can't see it right now, but there is a shadow that this umbrella is casting And listen, some people, listen, they don't understand, but they get outside the umbrella. But you better look for the shadow. Yesterday, I was waiting for some friends. Listen, uh, we went to a Kings game, and I found some shade. How many know, how many ready to get cool? I mean, it's still hot. I'm in the courtyard there, and like I would step out, and I would step back in. I would step out. Why? Because that sun, come on, was drying me out. And so I had to find the shade. God, come on, he is our shepherd. Listen, and some of us, listen, we don't think, listen, we don't think we need church. We don't think we need community. But listen, can I just tell you, he is the God of community. He is our shepherd. Can you pop that one? Listen, This is God Almighty. He is our shelter. He is our shepherd. Amen? Listen, I am just your under shepherd. Listen, I am an under shepherd under the ultimate shepherd. I am a, listen, listen, and I'm not telling you, listen, I'm not telling you to follow me. This is not a church that says, follow me. I want to tell you that as an example. Yeah, follow me. But listen, follow me as I follow him. Don't disconnect yourself from the shadow. Because how many know the shade will bring you relief? Come on, how many know the shadow knows? (laughs) Come on, thank you, Dave. Come on. God wants us to abide in the shadow of the Almighty. The Almighty is the word Shaddai. Everybody say Shaddai. Shaddai. It's taken from a Hebrew word, word, and it has many expressive meanings. It can mean God of the mountain, God of the destroyer of enemies, God the self-sufficient one, God the nurturer of babies. We're going to have, you're probably wondering why I'm all dressed up. We're going to have six or seven baby dedications next service. Come on. It's one way we're growing the church, y'all. Come on, let's go. God, the all-powerful one, he is almighty. He is Shaddai. Friends, it doesn't get any more personal, personal than Jesus. When I have a revelation of who he is and what he's done, and I can declare, and we should declare, he alone is my refuge. He alone is my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. No matter what's going on, no matter what the diagnosis is, I'm going to trust you. And when I do, listen, he's the God of the mountain. He's called me to move. He's the destroyer of enemies who are trying to destroy me. He is enough when I'm not enough. He is all powerful when I feel powerless. It leads me to my second point. 
We not only need to magnify his presence in our lives, we need to rely on his power. I think some of us this morning here are trapped in hopelessness, and I already believe people were getting set free this morning, and this is why we're cultivating. We're not, we're not calling you forward so Pastor Brandon can feel good, although it does make him feel good, but anyway... We're not calling to, to make any of us feel like this is a stage. and that, That's not it. We're just saying, let's, let's, let's come together. Let's come hungry. Let's get reacquainted with the altar again. And let's, let this be a place and a space where we encounter the living God. You see, I think some of us are trapped in hopelessness because we have developed trust issues in our relationship with God. We say things like, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? How many know these are honest? And if you're saying these questions, I'm not condemning you. What I'm trying to do is point you, come on, to the answer to those questions. And listen, he doesn't always give us the answers. What do we do when God is silent? Trust him anyway. We sit, we dwell. We remain, we stop getting in a hurry and we say, God, I'm putting my life on pause until I hear your prophetic voice in my life. Why can't I catch a break? How in the world, God, are you going to get me out of this mess? God, what did I do to deserve this? You see, many of us here this morning, your trust is teetering back and forth. And I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit is here to set you free. Come on, from your dumbbindedness this morning. And it's understanding this. I just got reminded. I'm trying not to be so intense. I love y'all. Are you guys okay? I really do. I want you to hear the pastor's heart and compassion and love that I have for you. Sometimes I look back at my messages on YouTube and I'm like, man, why are you so mad, bro? <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, uh, for years, for 20 plus years, I sat under intense men of God who could preach the pain off the wall. And so I have a hard time separating the two. Listen, the test you're going through at the moment is to develop you because you need to have an understanding that it can't destroy you. Listen, the test you're going through at the moment is to develop you because it can't. Everybody say it can't. It can't destroy you. You say, well, you didn't get Sandy's diagnosis. Talk to Sandy. Sandy. She ain't scared. She's not scared of death. She lost her husband six months ago. She knows where Wayne is. She's not scared. Why? Because she has a reservation. Come on. She has a reservation made. I remember being challenged as an 18, 19 year old and uh, the teacher came through and he told the story about a famous, and I can't, it just, it's the guy who, uh, who wrote, he was the guy in the 70s. What's the guy's name? The revivalist, Lord, please light the fire. Keith Green. You guys know Keith Green? Keith Green was before his time. He was, he was leading people, the masses in revival, right? He turned the whole uh, Christian music scene into just like, a move of God. It was amazing. And, and this teacher told the story of how Keith Green, long story short, died tragically in a plane accident. And then he posed the question to us, who won, the devil or God? And we all looked at each other like, I don't know. Who won? God did. Why? Because the devil can't win. Listen, when, when God is my home, when Jesus Christ is who I trust, when the Holy Spirit is in the inside, listen, if tragedy comes, listen, I don't lose. Ultimately, I win. Yeah. 
Your trust in Jesus is the only one who will help you pass the test you're currently taking. You see, we have a choice. Trust in Jesus and avoid the trap of the enemy. Psalm 91, three to nine. I love this. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. If, everybody say if. If. What's cool about this is Christ, because this promise is fulfilled in Christ, Christ takes the if out of it. If you leave the if in it, it's conditional. In Christ, it's unconditional. In other words, listen, you didn't deserve it, but you get the benefits anyway. It says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter. You see, when I have an understanding of where I'm seated in Christ, I have a confident trust in what Jesus will do for me. Ephesians 2, 4 to 5. Everybody say perspective. But God who is rich in mercy. How many thankful for the justice of God and his mercy? Amen. Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead... In our trespasses or our sin, he made us alive together with Christ. He says, by grace, you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. You see, this morning, I want to challenge you to leave with a revelation of where you are seated. Because listen, when you have a revelation of where you are seated, it will kill all your trust issues. Listen, he will, everybody say, he will will. set you high above the traps of the enemy. He will set you above the trap of worry, anxiety, fear, and doubt. In 1952... The American missionary Jim Elliott traveled to Ecuador to share the gospel. On January 8th, 1956, the natives he was visiting brutally murdered Elliott and four of his fellow missionaries. Elliott was 28 years old with a young wife and a daughter who was not yet a year old. In 1958, Jim Elliott's widow Elizabeth published this life and testament of her husband. She called it the shadow of the almighty. The title is a reference to Psalm 91, as we've been focusing on this morning, and it helps us to properly understand the message of the psalm. You guys ready for this? Psalm 91 does not guarantee immunity from trouble in life or tragedy in death, but it celebrates the benefits of confident trust in God. Listen. Trust in God will not keep you from experiencing bad things in life, but it will keep you as you experience bad things. Can I say that again? Trust in God will not keep you from experiencing bad things in life, but it will keep you as you experience bad things in life. That makes religious folks madder than a hornet. It really does. It gets them all upset. But then we have these these really unbiblical expectations, listen, of life. Not of God, because how many know God will carry you through? No matter what that other side looks like, God will carry you through. Might not have went as you wanted it to go, but he will carry you through. And this leads me to encouraging us this morning to apply God's protection to our lives. Everybody say this with me again. I am safe. I am secure. I am saved. William Craven was a Christian English nobleman and soldier who lived in London during the 15th century The city of London was ravaged with a plague. Craven, determined to flee the city for his country, 
a state to escape the spreading pl plague. But as he prepared to leave, he overheard someone innocently say to another, I suppose Craven quitting London to avoid the plague that his God lives in the country and not in town. Convicted, Craven canceled the journey, declaring, my God lives everywhere and can preserve me in town as well as in the country. He said, I will stay where I am. Can you just say that with me? I believe it's prophetic this morning. Will you just say that? I will stay where I am. Some of you got to convince yourself of that. Will you say it again? I will stay where I am. I will stay in the shaking. I will stay in the pruning. I will stay in the difficulty. <laughs> I will stay where I am. I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty, the God who moves mountains, the God who nurtures me, the God who loves me, the God who cares for me. Craven remained in London to help the plague victims but he never caught the disease himself because God was his refuge and fortress to those who trust in him. You see, Craven decided to stay logged in. How about you this morning? Psalm 91, 14 to 16. Here's the promise that is activated in Christ. It says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. Amen. With you. He hasn't abandoned you this morning. Listen, I felt like this morning when several of us were up here. Listen, the enemy is trying to thwart your eternal purpose on earth. Your eternal purpose on earth. You're going to heaven. But he doesn't want eternity to unfold in your life on this planet. And if he can get your eyes off of God and onto your circumstances and get you in confusion and get you in cave off and bring the complexity of culture into your home. Let me tell you, he wants to spin you out. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Warren Wiersbe said this, it's one thing for doctors to add years to your life, but God Hallelujah, adds life to our years. And this morning, listen, I can't promise you long life, but I can promise you that God will add life to your years. He'll add life to your relationship. He'll add life to your calling, to your purpose, to the plan that he has for you. Why? Because he wants to see eternity unfolding in your life on planet earth while you're alive. This is his heart. Church, the almighty one is watching over you. The angels are watching over you. And I want you to declare with me, I am safe. I am secure, and I will be saved. This morning with every head bowed and eye closed. Listen, you're on the struggle bus. I said that this morning about the 49ers, but I just feel like it's for some of us in here today. God wants to add life to your years. Satisfaction, not frustration. Some of you are frustrated about what you're going through. You can't even see God in it. And God, listen, he wants to make it clear to you today that he is with you, 
that he's not, he's hiding you in himself. He is your shield. He is your buckler this morning. He will quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Every lie he will cast down in Christ Jesus. Listen, stop empowering the lies that the enemy is speaking over your life and declare with me this morning, I am safe, I am secure, and I will be delivered. I am safe, I am secure, and I will be delivered. I'm going to ask my prayer team to come, but this morning, if you're here and you just say, listen, I need God to add life to my years. Yeah, you're saved. Yeah, you're a Christian, but are you a disciple? Are you a follower of Christ? Or have you stopped following in the midst of the storm? Are you waiting for the storm to pass and then you will follow? Are you checking out? God, are you going to come through me? If you come through with me, I'll follow you. No, it's not like that. He's bidding you to come and die so you can live fully alive in him. Are you ready to be a disciple who pursues your destiny in Christ? When the storm is waging all around, if that's you this morning, we you lift your hands and you say, the enemy is coming against me. But this morning I've been reminded this lesson, if God be for me, who can be against me? If that's you this morning, will you stand to your feet and just say, I am safe. I am secure. God can deliver me. If that's you, could you stand to your feet and just say, I am safe. I am secure and I will be delivered. God has your back this morning. Listen, I'm going to invite you that are standing to come up front and I'm going to ask my prayer ministers to do a little different. I just want you to be led and go to people that God is leading you to. But will you just come and just say, I need to just lean into this moment. Will you lean into this moment with us and just say, I'm not going to allow the enemy to stop me. I'm not going to allow the enemy to thwart me. I'm going to pursue my purpose. I'm going to pursue his presence. I'm going to magnify his presence in my life. I'm going to rely on his power. And I'm going to apply God's protection over my life. Thank you again for joining us. We pray that message ministered to your heart and lifted your spirit today. Hey, to find out more about joining the RLC online family, you can find us on the Church Center app. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. God bless you.